Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights and Entertainment. This is episode 10, Recaps and Recycling. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my lovely and talented co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. And how are you doing today, Michelle? I am fantabulous. This is our 10th episode, so this is a... <gasps> 10 already? Milestone. This is also our holiday episode, which we've gone through painstaking effort to decorate the set for the holiday. Thanking our daughter for the help. Yes. <laughs> So, um, not doing anything that's holiday themed on the agenda today, though. So that's about no, it. No. So Just today mentioning we mentioning that it's a holiday, exactly, or two, exactly. So today we do have another edition of Disney Detective. We'll talk about some park related uh, news with uh, some delays in some rides. Uh, there's a thirtieth anniversary coming up and uh, we will do a recap of Star Wars Celebration that was last week and we touched briefly on it. Then we will move on to our entertainment news. We have a couple of celebrity breakups. Uh, we have um, a recycling of uh, some 70s shows coming up in an interesting twist. And then we'll have a recap of the comic book con uh, convention, the regional convention that we went to this past weekend. Um, talk about some of the details of that, some of the panels we sat in on. Uh, and then we will finish up with our insightful picks of the week, like we usually do. So, ready to get into it? I'm ready. Let's do it. Go for Disney Detective. So one of the uh, delays that came out uh, was the new Mickey and Minnie Runaway Railway ride uh, that is uh, going up in Disney Hollywood Studios. It was supposed to be opening, I think it was supposed to open actually later this year, um, but they actually announced that it will now be delayed until the spring of 2020. Um, in other news, they actually confirmed that the ride was going to be opening in Disneyland as well in 2022, which that was kind of new because everybody expected, you know, they don't always do the same rides in in both both coasts. So it was kind of nice to see, oh, they are going to put it um, in in Disneyland. I didn't see what they were if there was something that they were getting rid of right since they're recycling the great movie ride in right studios. that was that was basically what um you know when they announced at uh d23 i guess it was last year um that they were shutting down the great movie ride and that mickey and minnie's runaway railway was going to be going into uh, that location and it was supposed to again be opening the fall of of this year um, but the delay was announced and pretty much it was expected because of everything going on with uh, Galaxy's Edge Star Wars Galaxy's Edge and the rise of the resistance attraction so I guess you know they just didn't have enough people you know to to get everything they they got finished, a lot going so. on there at one time well in fact rise of the resistance isn't even going to open when galaxy's edge is opening right. so that's in phase two of galaxy's edge right right so, so they're still going to have a lot of resources tied up on that yeah so they're just going to kind of scatter everything so you know unfortunate for people that were looking forward to to going on that now you have to wait 
So I don't know. I'm, I'm still bitter that they shut down a great movie, right? I am too. I, it, it was, you know, it was. It's like you know they've got more than enough land there. They, there was right. no reason for them to recycle a ride that everyone loved. Right, and I and I guess maybe part of it also, you know, because at at the time when the park opened, it was. Disney MGM Studios. Right. And a good portion of the movies that were featured were MGM related. So when they sort of parted ways with MGM and became Disney Hollywood Studios, maybe that was well, I mean, something you've, contractual so you've, that. You've lost the you great know. movie ride. They did away with a back lot tour. What does. Disney Studios have, Hollywood Studios have anything to do with making movies at this point. Right. Now it's really become, you have the Pixar area where it's not how they made right. Pixar. It's that you're immersed in a Pixar movie. Obviously, Galaxy's Edge is going to be, you're immersed in the Star you know, so now it's more Im- immersing you into film life as opposed to when the original design of the park was to be a working studio. They were doing filming there. The idea was that they're not doing that anymore. either. They don't do any of that there, you know, anymore. So, So you know, know. it's kind of changed, but I think, you know, the same thing kind of happened with, with universal as well. You know, universal, you know, in California was a working studio is still a working studio, but the theme park is completely different. And when they built universal in Florida, it wasn't a studio at all. It was just a theme park. Right. So the things have changed obviously over 30 years, which is brings us to our, our next uh, topic is that Hollywood studios will be celebrating its 30th anniversary. Um, the official celebration will begin on May 1st. Uh, guests will receive a special 30th anniversary guide map and a button to commemorate. Plus, there's also plenty of merchandise that'll be available. Uh, of course, there. Of is. course, because there has to be uh, t-shirts, baseball caps, tumblers, special magic bands, ornaments, and more. And of course, for anybody that's an annual pass holder, there's exclusive items that will be available uh, as well. And then, of course, they're going to be doing special food and beverages throughout the park, like Kylo Ren cupcakes and incredible macaroons. Um, <laughs> the, you, you, they'll, you know, they'll find a way to get to market it and get your money, no matter yeah, what. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, at 9.05 p.m., they will debut the wonderful world of animation projection show. Um, well, on, any word on whether or not they're going to be streaming that live? I haven't heard anything. It's still early. They they might. They they do usually tend to to yeah. stream things. Um, if not the debut of it, maybe a week later. Right. They right. will. So uh, usually, if you go to uh, the Disney blog, uh, Disney dot com blog, they'll they usually have that. But sometimes they don't announce it until you know a couple of days before so we'll have to keep a lookout for that right. um, and then they're going to be doing a special after hours party as well um, that tickets will will be available for as well so you know pretty pretty cool stuff coming up you know nice that they celebrate their anniversaries um, and now I'm going to turn it back to you to give a recap of Star Wars Celebration well thank you very much I'm honored to actually be a part of the Disney Detective segment this week. I usually am not. You're so welcome. Uh, well, that's what happens when it comes to Star Wars stuff. I don't want to, you know, say anything wrong or pronounce somebody's name wrong. So, as we talked about last week, uh, Star Wars Celebration did happen last weekend. Uh, we had covered part of it with the release of the new trailer. Right. Um, it was out in Chicago. Uh, so I just wanted to go over real quick some of the really important key things that came out. Obviously, the first thing we came out was the the title of the new movie mm-hmm. and the trailer, uh, Episode Nine: The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, they also took a look at a much-anticipated new game coming out from Electronic Arts, uh, their Respawn division, called Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Uh, this is a first-person platforming shooter type of game. Um, The story behind it will be canon, which is nice. It's set um, after uh, Return of the Jedi. Okay. But before the rise of the New Order. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm sorry, after Revenge of the Sith. And so it's between Revenge of the Sith 
and um, A New Hope. A New Hope, okay. So there's hints that you will see cameos from some very well-known characters in the cool. Star Wars universe. Cool. Um, the uh, the footage looked great. None of it was gameplay footage. It was all cut scenes that they did, but it looks like a very interesting, almost like a um, Force Unleashed Type okay, style which you very much enjoy story, yeah. So everyone's very much looking forward to that. And uh, there was hints during the one panel that we'll see elements of the Star Wars thirteen thirteen game from a couple years back that had been uh, uh, canceled, but it was supposed to be like a a look of the underbelly of of the capital city of Coruscant and uh, sort of a gritty version of a Star Wars game. Oh. Okay. That folks were looking cool. forward to. We also saw a first look, despite uh, Disney's attempts otherwise, of The Mandalorian. Which you were very excited about. Yes. This looks very good. What was disappointing, though, was as they were streaming the panel, they cut the stream when they put the footage up on of the course, screen. Of course. They always do that. Um, but they didn't for any of the other panels, It though. was just this one. It was just for Mandalorian. Okay. Um, and... John Favreau was hosting the panel, who's the executive producer of the show. He neglected to tell people not to record it beforehand. He came in sort of wink, wink, nudge, nudge afterwards saying, don't record any of that stuff after it. Right. So, of course, that footage reached the internet within of minutes of the panel. <laughs> uh, I did get to see it. Looks fantastic. Uh, it's going to be one of the first uh, new Shows on uh, Disney's new streaming platform, Disney Plus. Which, um, surprise, surprise, we are going to be subscribing uh, to, obviously. Uh, for, if, <laughs> for no other reason than The Mandalorian. Right. <laughs> um, they also offered a sneak peek at uh, the next, which is supposed to be the last season of Clone Wars. Um, Clone Wars was came to a close right around the time that uh, Lucas had sold Mm -hmm. uh, Lucasfilm to Disney. Uh, Disney pulled the plug on it midstream, didn't really give the show a chance to finish up its storyline. And uh, there was a backlash from the fans. Okay. Uh, so much so that they had, they had some footage that wasn't fully rendered of the stories. And they actually released those of like the last three episodes or something of the one season that they had been working on. Just based on fan demand. Oh, wow. Okay. So there's been enough upswelling from, you know, a grassroots effort that Disney bowed to pressure and actually gave Dave Filoni, the executive producer, the go-ahead to do another to season. Well, that'll be good. Um, so they're going to get their final season there, which is nice. Um, but those, those are the four big highlights, I think, that came out of it. Um, next one will be in Anaheim next year. They're not skipping a year. Right, like. and that's what I actually brought to your attention and you were like, what? Yeah. Wait. Well, I think, I think Disney realized they're making so much money off of this that they shouldn't be skipping it, you know? <laughs> so it's a, it's a Disney thing. I'm sure. I don't think so, but okay. So uh, that's it for our Disney detective this okay. week. So entertainment news this week, we have a couple of celebrity breakups that are happening, uh, which I will let you talk about, my dear. Sure. So obviously one that we're actually both shocked, you know, people first is Adele and her husband um, have decided to separate. The statement came out from Adele's representative that's. Uh, stated simply, Adele and her partner have separated. They are committed to raising their son together lovingly, and as always, they ask for privacy. There will be no further comment. Uh, the two have actually been evol involved uh, since 2011, um, but really didn't talk about their their relationship. Basically, kept it uh, private for the most time. Uh, for for most of it, uh, they welcomed their first child in 2012. Uh, they were rumored to have gotten married in 2017, but never confirmed when they officially got married. Um, so anybody that is a fan of Adele knows that most of her songs from previous albums were all about breakups and past boyfriends where her, her latest album was a, uh, a different mood 
uh, was much more loving. There were songs related to her, her son, and obviously her boyfriend slash husband at the time. So, um, so her next album should be should be interesting to say the to say the least. Uh, if she goes back to the uh, the breakup, yeah, type. And, and I have to say, I don't know how she manages to keep such a low profile and keep such a private life being a celebrity like she is. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, people didn't even know that she was married, mm-hmm. that she had gotten married. Right. Uh, you know, there were people who saw, well, she has showed up at the Grammys with a wedding ring on. and you Right, know, right. You know, there was no official announcement. Well, and I think she's she's been one that's always kept a low profile in general. You know, yeah. she, you know, I think she's Well, just spends... the fact that she can do that, I think, in right. today's day and age, amazes me. Right, and I think, too, you know, for the most part, she lives in the UK, you know, and over there, things are a lot different. You know, she's not part of the Hollywood hubbub as much, you know. She would come here when she needed to, but for the most part, you know, stays there and 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 leaves everything, you know, right, right. there. Um, one of the other breakups which when i mentioned it to you you had <laughs> no idea who these people are and that's totally okay being the cultural <laughs> swine that i am <laughs> right uh so anna camp and skylar austin um they were they actually met while filming uh pitch perfect one um uh anna camp is 36 austin um skylar is skylar austin is 31 um, she was actually previously married, um, so this was her second marriage, his first, um, and they basically announced on social media that after two years of marriage, they were, they were separating, um, they, I guess it was about a month ago, they actually put their house up on the market, nobody really knew you know, saw it as, as suspicion. And basically, you know, they came out with a statement saying that we can confirm that we have decided to separate. The decision was made mutually and amicably. Um, and again, we asked for privacy as we navigate through this transition. Um, both had kind of been away from social media. They had unfriended each other on Instagram. Um, well, that's childish. <laughs> It's it's the way of the world now. And now um, you know why I hate social media so much. Right, exactly. Um, and, uh, you know, but recently they've both posted, um, she posted a picture of their dog, and he actually posted a picture. He was at a Passover Seder the other night. Um, so they're starting to, to come back onto social media, but again, um, they are separating as well. So that was kind of... Um, Sad news to hear about both of the the couples breaking up. So well, and you know, being in a relationship, being in a marriage is difficult mm-hmm. under normal circumstances. Oh, absolutely, and I'm sure being in you know the entertainment business and you know f- you know working different you know locations, you know taking time away, you know from the family, and you know thing things happen. So yeah, I mean. Under normal circumstances, it's difficult. Under the cir- circumstances of being a celebrity, I have to imagine that there are additional pressures that weigh mm-hmm. in on that that yeah. tend to make it difficult. Yeah. So, anyway, wish them the best. Hope mm-hmm. everything works out. Yep. Uh, so, the next thing that we had was uh, kind of a nostalgic throwback here. Um, Norman Lear and Jimmy Kimmel are actually coming back with a special night of a live version of All in the Family and the Jeffersons. Uh, One night only, Woody Harrelson and Marissa Tomei will play Archie and Edith. Jamie Foxx and Wanda Sykes will play George and Louise Jefferson. Uh, There'll be appearances by Ellie Kemper, Justina Mikado, Will Ferrell, and a bunch of others that are still to be announced. Um... It, this is almost a prove them wrong type of effort mm-hmm. here. Norman Lear came out with a statement saying, uh, quote, people say these two shows were meant for the 70s and would not work today. We disagree with them and are here to prove with the great cast depicting all in the family and the Jeffersons, the timeliness of human nature. The 90 minute special uh, doesn't currently have an air date yet, but it's slated for sometime next month. Uh, and I have to say, in today's culture, 
it's going to be a challenge to capture what the spirit of those shows were and not invite too much controversy. Mm, it, it should be interesting to, to see because obviously All in the Family had a very different feel to it than, say, the Jeffersons right. in some respects, where, you know, everybody knows Archie Bunker, you know, he meant well, but he was he was a racist. Well, you know? and the thing is, he and, represented a segment of the population that, given the current presidential administration, clearly still exists. Absolutely, and even maybe more so now than, than ever before, so... Um, so it'll be interesting to see their, their take on it, their spin on it, how, you know, how they, they bring that, you know, to light, um, where, the, you know, the Jeffersons, you know, back then, you know, he was, George Jefferson was a, a successful black man in the seventies. And yeah. that was very, you know, uncalled, you know, very unusual for the time, you know, living, you know, in a high rise apartment and, and whatnot and having, you know, a, a neighbor a that was race. a mixed race, yeah. you know, that was so taboo where now <clears throat> it's, you know, you don't even think about it. You don't even, you know, to even say that there, somebody's mixed race, you know, a mixed race marriage is almost insulting because it's just a marriage. Right. It's two people that love each other that, that got married. Who cares the color of their skin or, you know, their their religions or, or whatnot. So it'll be interesting to see how how it plays out. Yeah, I mean, in the 70s, both shows themselves were groundbreaking. Uh, they were controversial. Uh, even even some of the stuff that they dealt with on All in the Family back then mm-hmm. was headline generating controversial oh, type stuff. Definitely, um, and they were pushing the boundaries of social norms back then. Mm-hmm. Uh, they weren't afraid to to point out the the white elephant in the room. There, mm-hmm. uh, they they drew a very clear line between what America saw as as wholesome television mm-hmm. and what reality was in society. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they, they, they pointed a spotlight on it. Oh, yeah. And yeah. it made a lot of people question themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is only a, a, a one-time special here, but uh, I'm curious how it's going to play out. Yeah. I'm curious the reaction that it's going to get from the should audience. Be, should be interesting to see. So the next thing that we had was actually a recap from a comic book convention that we went to this weekend. We went to the Greater Philadelphia Comic Con, uh, held at the Greater Philadelphia Expo Center in Oaks, Pennsylvania. It ran from Saturday the 12th through uh, Sunday the 14th. Friday the 12th. Friday the 12th through Sunday the 14th. Sorry, I was, you know, there was a lot of time travel happening <laughs> at the convention, so I'm a little confused. There were various TARDISes and Time Lords and whatnot. So there were a ton of panels, discussions, and workshops that were there. They had more photo ops than I had expected. I was really surprised at the turnout that they had from mm-hmm. a celebrity yeah, standpoint. Yeah, this, this was the first time that we had been planning to go to this one for a couple of years now. It, it's, it's usually always held the same time of year, um, but... Again, for the past couple of years, we've either been away on vacation, just coming back from vacation, getting ready to go away, and it was just kind of like, oh, we'll get there, we'll get there. And as it happened um, last weekend, we really didn't have any plans, and it was like, hey, let, let's finally go to this one and, and, and check it out and, and see what it's like. And I think we were both, you know, very impressed with it. Um, it kind of helped that one of the panels that was going on um, on Sunday, which is when we went, was one that we were both very interested, yep. you know, in attending. Normally, we don't do the panels at some of the Comic Cons just because of the grand scale of some of the Comic Cons and the fact that, you know, you're waiting hours and hours to even get into a panel and you don't get to enjoy, you know, the rest of the convention. But this was a nice size. It wasn't too big. It wasn't too small. It, you know, um, very Goldilocks-ish. Um, you know, it was just right. And it happened to be a panel we were both interested in seeing. And we didn't need a ticket to get in. You know, we, we were kind of surprised, actually. We got there a little early and we're like, 
oh, there's, <laughs> we, can, we can sit in on the, the panel that's right before yeah. it. Oh, okay. Um, so it, it, was, it, was a, it was a good one. I think we'll, we'll definitely uh, be going, to, going back to that one again. What I really liked about it was it was very well balanced. Mm-hmm. So you had, they touched on everything that you want in a convention. Mm-hmm. So you had yeah. a dedicated area for cosplay and costuming groups. Mm-hmm. They did the, you know, your cosplay costume contest. You had Artist Alley. And that's, I think that's probably what blew me away more than anything was that when you've walked into the convention center, you started at Artist Alley. Mm-hmm. They didn't bury it in they the back corner in the somewhere. Back. Right. Like these guys were the highlight of the show, mm-hmm. basically. Right. You know, this was the premiere walk in, see them first, and go through that. Right, right. Um, and I think that was a credit to them. Mm-hmm. Um, you had a number of vendors there. You had a gaming element there mm-hmm. with uh, a gaming tournament. They did some Dragon Ball Z, some Mario Kart, Super Smash Brothers, and so forth. Um, and they were they were prizing you out. So mm-hmm. you know, it was I think it was a five dollar buy in to, to play. And they were prizing out based on what they collected. So they weren't profiting off of the prizes. They were using the prizes to pay out to the winners, which was really cool. That is cool. Um, They had a ton of guests there. I mean, they had Alice Cooper. They had Edward James Olmos, Michael Horn from uh, Battlestar Galactica. Um, They had iZombie represented, Rose McGiver, Malcolm Goodwin. uh, Daniel Bonjour was there. uh, Jake Busey from Starship Troopers. Um, then you had Star Trek was represented, Deep Space Nine. You had Michael Dorn, Nana Visitor, Jeffrey Combs. Um, you had Star Trek Discovery with Anson uh, Mount, which we called the tail end of his panel. Right, we did. That was very cool. Um, and then the panel that we sat in on that mm-hmm. I was really, we were really interested in seeing was the Expanse panel. You had Kara Gee, Frankie Adams, uh, Dominique Tipper, and uh, Kaz Anvar from the expanse there. Um, so that was the panel that we sat in on uh, for the whole panel. Right, right. And what I really thought was interesting, now I'm, you know, spoiler here, my pick of the week is expanse, so we'll talk about it <gasps> in more so detail. Shocked. But <laughs> the panel itself I thought was interesting because they talked less about the panel and the characters and more about the message that the show is trying mm-hmm. to portray yeah. and that of being all inclusive, mm-hmm. you know, regardless of race, religion, creed, whatever. Um, and the fact that the show itself is allowing the, the actors and the writers to do that. Right. And to represent how they want to represent. Right. They're not doing the cookie cutter, the blonde, blue eyed, actress to play the role the, it's very a, a very unique cast a very melting pot and a very cast. female strong yes, female led cast yeah and it's funny because i never really thought about it watching it that how female you know oriented until like you know because i just saw it as hey this is a really good show and then sitting back going oh yeah wow that she is she's the one oh wow like all yeah. these you know the female leads that that take yeah. part of it so. and and you know being the parents of a 12 year old daughter it's very important to see things out there that are empowering to mm-hmm. her Just, you know for her to see that you know you can be what you want to be you know, don't let stereotypes hold you down. Mm-hmm. Don't let people tell you who you are or what you can right. do. Right. Um, and that's really what the message of the panel was. At mm-hmm. least my takeaway was. Oh, definitely. You know, it was, it doesn't matter what color your skin is. doesn't matter where you come from. You can be anything you want to be. It doesn't mm-hmm. matter if you're male or female. Right. You know, don't live by other people's rules. Make your own rules if the rules aren't fair. Absolutely. Um, so that it was a great panel. Mm-hmm. A great show. Um I'd love to go back again next year. They have it every year. Uh, I don't know how many years they've had it. I didn't, I didn't yeah, bother to look I'm, at I'm, that. I don't know how long they've had it, but it's it's been quite you know quite a few years, and it's usually that first or that second week, you know, in right. April time frame. So. so great show. I was glad we we made it this year. Yeah. So it is time for our insightful picks of the week. And as always, I defer to you, my dear. Why, thank you, my love. 
Um, so this is one that's been a favorite of ours um, since the beginning. Actually, I think I started watching it without you, didn't I? You did. The first couple episodes first, were kind of rough And I was to like, hey, you know, you're going to want to watch this. And then you're like, oh, all right, I'll watch it. Um, so I'm talking about The Orville, um, which is a science fiction comedy drama series created by and starring Zeth McFarlane. Um, he stars as Ed Mercer, an officer in the Planetary Union's line of exploratory space vessels. Um, after his career takes a downfall following a divorce, he's given ownership of, or he's given the ship, the Orville, to be his first command, only to discover that his ex-wife has been assigned as his first officer. Um, it's inspired by several sources, which, you know, if you're a fan of any other sci-fi fantasy show, um, including like Star Trek or Twilight Zone, you can definitely see some of the parallels. Um, so the series tells the story of Mercer, his uh, ex-wife Grayson, and the crew of the Orville as they embark on various diplomatic and exploratory missions. Um, the show is, uh, airs on Fox. Uh, the season finale is actually this coming Thursday. Um, there's been two seasons, so you can obviously find it um, online to, to stream it if you've missed any of it. Um, it's, it's definitely a throwback to the old Star Trek in some respects. Um, a lot of the first couple of episodes were dealing with the the different um, crew members and their races and the different lifestyles that they, that they had to deal with, you know, where the, the one, um, the one character uh, came from a very, the, the, uh, I can't remember what her, her race was, but um, very intellectual. So the fact that she was part of, you know, a union officer was like totally against what her parents ever wanted. Um, you know, and then you have Bordis, who was a Mocklin, and it's an all male race. But as you find out, you know, through some of the episodes, not every Mocklin that's born is actually male, that they end up having surgery to become male. And you know, you, you can see some parallels within our own, you know, society now of what's right and what's wrong and 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 whatnot. And, um, you know, some of the the episodes are really funny and some of them kind of get you and, and really make you think. And I kind of like that. You never know what you're going to get when you're watching an episode there. You know, there's always that little bit of comedy because, you know, McFarlane is, is known for that. But yet. There's always that serious, you know, undertone. Yeah, not every episode is about one of the crew members having to go pee for the first time in a year. <laughs> right. <laughs> that, that was one of the episodes. That right? was one of the episodes. You know, there were some where we're sitting there going, really? That, uh -huh. what was this episode about? You know, but then, you know, there have yeah, been. They, they go off the rails once in a while. But, every now and then. Uh, the. It's a good cast. Mm -hmm, it is. It's a very good cast. It's a good mix. Um, we were kind of sad when the the one cast member from the first season um, she left the show. I don't know why it was yeah. um, that she left, but the the uh, character that came in to replace her kind of a, a perfect fit. Everybody kind of, you know. And they handled the departure tastefully. Uh -huh. Yeah, with it wasn't. Dignity. Yeah, she didn't exactly. just disappear, or get killed off. Right. Or something she like decided that. she needed to go back home and be with her family. And, yeah, you they know, did a good so, job with yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, good show. Mm -hmm. Good show. Nice pick. So, as previously mentioned, my insightful pick of the week is The Expanse. So we'll <gasps> oh, stick, my God. I'm so shocked. We will stick with the sci fi theme here. Uh, this is a television series based on the books by James S.A. Corey, uh, of which I'm about midway through. Uh, there's a lot of them. Uh, the first three seasons were produced and aired by Sci-Fi. Uh, they're currently available for streaming on Amazon Prime. Sci-Fi did cancel the show in 2018, uh, but apparently Jeff Bezos was a huge fan of the show and decided that he was going to pick it up and produce it for Amazon Prime. Must be nice. <laughs> yeah. You know, anyway, 
<laughs> um, but no, it works out well because it had, you know, a lot of, uh, had a good following. So absolutely. A lot of people are happy about that. Um, production wrapped on season four under Amazon in early February. Um, we're expecting a release date in uh, sometime in 2019. Um, guesses are probably sometime in the summer, June or July in 2019. Right, right. So the show's been described as a Game of Thrones in space. Uh, not watching Game of Thrones, I can't really see whether I that's guess accurate. I could kind of see from from what I know, obviously, of Game of Thrones, since I don't I don't watch it either. But I, I could kind of see that. So it's an epic space adventure noted for its realism. And that's the one thing that really turned me on was that, you know, it's, it's set in the future, but not far enough in the future that we have fantastical technologies to travel faster than light or anything like that. Um, they haven't even mastered gravity at this point in time. So one of the interesting things that you have is during space flight in the show, they don't have artificial gravity. So the only time you have the perception of gravity is either using magnetic boots to stick you to the deck mm -hmm. or if the ship is under thrust. And there have been a couple of episodes where the, there have been combat scenes and you've seen the effects of having things that aren't properly secured in a zero-G environment right, right. when you're in combat, you know? And I remember when you were first watching the show, that was one of the big positives that you that you liked about the show was yeah. that it wasn't this fake future they were taking a lot of scientific realisms and you know and and using it and you you enjoyed that yeah they do they do a very good job keeping things as scientifically accurate as possible um while still you know moving the plot along mm -hmm. um you know there's there's certain science fiction elements because mm -hmm. it's a science fiction yeah. show, yeah. but, uh, they're, they're generally faithful to the realism effect that they're going for in it. Uh, it's a diverse group of talent. Like we talked about before. Um, what's interesting though, is you, while you have racially diverse crew, there's nothing that's talked about when it comes to race. Uh, you have three factions in the show. You have earth, you have Mars, which was colonized by Earth, and then you have the Belters, who were really the underdogs in the show. And the Belters are, are basically um, oppressed individuals who, you know, we expanded to the asteroid belt for resources at some point in time as a corporation, corporate type event, and people wound up living out there. And they stayed out there. And, and they kind stayed. kind of became their own society out right. there. And... And while they're fighting for equal rights, they're fighting for basic survivability. Mm -hmm. You know, the corporations turn off their air if they don't work or produce enough. They don't provide the water for them right. and stuff like that. So, so they're basic human needs that turn that make them the underdog versus everyone else. And mm -hmm. uh, there's an anti big anti corporation feel through the whole series itself. Um, it's one of the best sci-fi shows I think I've ever watched from an, just an overall standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, as I said, I'm a fan of the books uh, and the television series, uh, to the credit of the producers, remains very faithful to the books, which is, under normal circumstances, very difficult to do. Um, producers tend to be much... You have a very abbreviated amount of time to tell a story that that a series of books mm -hmm. is telling. Uh, so you're very, you're often very tempted to trim that down and alter the story a lot to fit into the amount of time that you have. Um, and they don't do that. You know, they've turned two seasons into the first book. Mm -hmm. uh, which was, which was done fantastically. And that was actually something that they did briefly touch on in the panel was that the producers, went against sci-fi in a lot of, you know, yeah. cause sci-fi wanted it to be more cookie cutter. And they said, no, we want to keep it more like the book. Right. And that, that's one of the things that they're kind of excited about going to Amazon now, because now you don't have to worry about the commercial breaks. You don't have to worry about fitting into that 42 or 45 minute yeah. per episode. If you want an episode that's, 
you know, 60 minutes, you can do an episode that's 60 minutes. If something's only 30 minutes, it's only 30 minutes. And that now they can actually be a little bit more truer to the books than they were allowed to be in the past. Right. Yeah. And they they don't have the same constraints that they had, but even with the constraints that sci-fi put on them, they were still, able they were to, still able to maintain the, the spirit of the books. Yeah. Um, so I recommend it's this fourth season is going to be coming out soon. I recommend catching up on the first three seasons, which you can do from Amazon Prime, and um, and it's a great show. Mm-hmm. And I think that's all, all we had this week. I think that is. Um, we'll be back uh, next week with another great podcast. Uh, anything to say in closing, dear? No. Have a great weekend. Have a great week. And uh, we'll catch everybody uh, next week. All right. Thanks a lot. And we're out.